Let's take a look at using Mocha AE to do some simple screen replacement. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. Uh, sorry that there's no camera on this one, it was recorded during the coronavirus outbreak and there is no room to set up my green screen or anything, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along anyway without seeing my uh, overgrown, uh, slowly fattening, slowly disgusting face from lockdown. <laughs> Let's do it. I've got a video here uh, of a man on the sofa looking at a laptop while his wife reads a book in the background. I'm just going to make a new composition from this selection and I'm going to choose just a brief four second section here. How about a bit where uh, this lady eats a crisp? Oh, here it comes. Crisp time. No. Eating a crisp. Give me a crisp. Yeah, let's take that bit. <laughs> I'm uh, going to take a brief section from that so that I don't have to work with the whole thing. Uh, and what we're going to do is track this laptop screen here and replace it with some content so the guy's not just looking at a blank screen. To do that, it's really simple. Ever since uh, 2020 or 2019, I think, Mocha AE has been part of After Effects as opposed to a separate piece of software. If you go to your effects and presets panel, you can type in Mocha. That's going to bring up Mocha AE and you can drag and drop that onto your footage. That gives you a nice big friendly button to launch Mocha AE, which is what we're going to be doing now. You're going to get all of this um, stuff when you open it up. You can just click past that until you get to the essentials um, workspace inside Mocha. I'm not going to dive into the details too much. It's supposed to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. So what we're going to do is choose an area of this footage to track and then apply a perspective pin to this screen so that we can replace it with a corner pin in After Effects. To do that, you need to first select your Create x Layer tool and roughly, and you can be very rough, choose an area which best represents the outer area of the area that you'd like to track. For example, what I mean by that is you need a place that's not going to move too much, that's going to remain in the same angle as the area that you want to track and that uh, doesn't have any reflections or stuff passing over it too much. If one of these cut corners was covered, for example, you wouldn't have to do a um, square like that. You just need three corners. So you could just track these three corners of this area instead and you'd still get a pretty good result. Because I can see all four corners, however, I am going to track all four, like so. As you can see, you can be pretty loose with it. Because we're tracking a screen as well, we're going to turn on our planar surface tool, which gives us this blue box. And holding Z and clicking, I'm going to zoom into this area. Holding X and clicking will allow you to pan around. And then if you hover over the corners of each of these, you'll see that you can drag and drop them to the rough corners of your screen. I like to do this roughly first. And then I like to zoom in and be really accurate. Obviously, these have rounded corners, so I'm just making sure that it's going to line up with the edges of the screen. Looks pretty good. And we're going to do that for each of our four corners. Like so, and then zoom back out. So we can see now we have our rough area to track, and then we also have our screen, which is tracked pretty much permanently. I'm starting in the middle here of the timeline. So what I want to do is make sure that my track motion options are fully selected. We want to track the position, the scale, the rotation, the skew, and the perspective, because we're doing a screen track here. Now I can choose to either track backwards or forwards, which I'll do so, and I want to track the whole clip. So I'm just going to click track backwards, and you can see that it's going to go through our footage and it's going to try and track this. It does a pretty good job on this clip. I've already tested it. If you've got reflections going over your screens, if you've got objects that pass over the screen entirely, um, it won't do such a good job. However, it is pretty good at it. If, like I said, one of these corners would covered, were covered, it would still work. You can see now by the blue and the red on the bottom here, that this area has been tracked, but once it gets to the red, it has, hasn't tracked that direction yet. So I'm just going to click back to there and click track forward instead. And it's going to track forward through our footage. And we can see that lady eat the crisp one more time uh, as her husband looks at something suspicious <laughs> on the laptop screen. You can see now that we have an entirely tracked clip here. The screen is tracked to the uh, laptop and it is all the way through pretty happy and accurate with it. If you wanted to, if you weren't happy, you could find the place where it messes up and readjust and it will create a keyframe for you at that point. Um, but we're happy with it, so we don't need to. I'm just going to hit save and close Mocha AE. I'm going to go back to our footage here. Now, it's very important that the composition that you are putting onto this 
um, frame here is the correct size, the same size as your original footage. Uh, let me show you why. I'm just going to create two new solids here. This solid is going to be screen replacement. So this is what we're going to put on the screen and it's going to be the correct size of the composition. Now I'm going to create a new solid. I'm going to make it the wrong size. So like 3,000 3, by 1,500. Yeah. And that's going to be the wrong size and we'll call this screen replacement wrong. I'll hide that one. And we've now got this, which is way too different. If I take my laptop sofa layer, I go to my tracking data in Mocha and I click create tracking data. It's going to bring up uh, the layers that we had in our Mocha AE panel. We only made one, so it's going to give me layer two. Obviously, you would have been better to name that, but we're only going to have one. You can see that it's going to then create tracking data, corner pins and a center point for each corner of your footage here. And if you scrub through, then it's going to be completely tracked. You need to choose the export option or corner pin, choose the layer export two, and I'm just going to pick the wrong one just to show you. Because this is not the correct aspect ratio, when I click apply export, it's not going to apply it correctly to the um, option. If I show that through here, you can see that we can't see where this has ended up. If we move it around, we can see this tiny little black square. That is our composition. So you can see that, yes, it's tracked to the footage and it moves within the space. But because the original aspect ratio wasn't the same, it's kind of messed it up a little bit. Let's delete that. And let's instead do it to the screen replacement that was the correct size. Hit apply export. And you can see that that's worked absolutely fine. Now, you might be saying, but Matt, obviously the laptop screen isn't the same aspect ratio as this. So how are we going to fix that? Well, you can pre-compose your screen replacement. And we'll just call that screen replacement comp one. That's fine. Now, inside here, we're going to create a new solid that is the correct shape. Now I know that a MacBook shape is uh, 16 by 10. So if I did 1600 by 1000, for example, as a solid, and I pre-compose that and called that screen content, I could then stretch this to fill. Oops, excuse me. Stretch. Oops, excuse me again. Stretch this to fill. There we go. Which is going to distort and stretch this content. For example, if I create some text quickly, uh, and I type in distort, and I'll just make this solid um, white, so it's a bit easier if I just do a quick fill, something like that. You can see now that this has been distorted and stretched by scaling up this composition to fit here. However, the original composition, the one we'll be creating the content in, is the correct size. So when we go to laptop sofa, it is now the correct size where it has been tracked here. Okay, so correct size, stretch to an incorrect size in its parent comp, stretch back to a correct size within this comp. It seems like that's a lot of extra work, but I think it's worth it for the amount of quality tracking that you get from using Mocha AE. At the moment, it looks a little bit weird because it's not accepting any of the light from the environment. So I'm just gonna choose a different layer value. Uh, multiply works well because obviously if you've got a white background it's going to absolutely fix that in place um, other things that might work soft light overlay screen depending on of course whether your background color is uh, black or white one thing is the edges of this composition are sharp whereas the footage is slightly blurry so i'm just going to with my layer selected double click the shape tool which will create a mask in the exact shape of the layer that we have here uh, i could show that if i zoom out a little bit you can see that the mask is clipping to the comp layer, but remember our comp layer is corner pinned down to here. You could then increase the feather a little bit, maybe to say 30 pixels, and that's gonna soften up the edges of your composition quite a bit. If you made it maybe 70 pixels, you'll see that in a bit more of a extreme circumstance. Uh, obviously as well, if you wanted to, you could turn on uh, motion blur, which means as it moves around, it's gonna blur a bit more easily with your footage here. I'm going to change that back to multiply because I like the way that that looked. And there you go. We have our tracked footage applied as a Lady Eats a Crisps. He's looking at a word called distort but instead. He's sending us a secret message. <laughs> Now, uh, obviously, if you've got lights in the scene and stuff, you can do masks of shapes to um, affect that. But this is a nice, simple little track here and a nice, simple little tutorial. So I won't go into that in too much detail. If people want it, I might try and do a more in-depth tutorial on how this works uh, in the future. Till then, though, thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this tutorial and I'll see you next time on another episode of Tip Top.
remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.